you know? Oh, you okay. can't even high five me. Oh, that's I sad. Can't. You could bless the bottle though. Blessing. No, the no, no, fist. The the ba- the, the bottom of your fist. <laughs> the bo- that's the top. Right there and then put it. <laughs> there you go. Do it again. Okay. There you go. <laughs> What's going on everybody? It's Rome and today I'm in beautiful Yamhill County out in Oregon at Brickhouse Vineyards. We're gonna show you how they grow their grapes to make wine. We're gonna go home with some beautiful bottles of wine and try to make something delicious out of it. What I'm making, I have no idea. This is Farm the Table. What's going on, Doug? How you doing, bro? Much. What you got planned for us today? Well, the first thing, I thought we'd jump in the Mahindra here Okay. and take a little spin around the vineyard and we can talk about some really special grapes. I think we should taste them too. Listen, say less, I got you. Okay. On the Batmobile, we go. Let's go. <laughs> so let's have a look at some of this Pinot Noir here. This is uh, block four right here. Okay. And it has been historically producing our very best fruit. I can see, look at some of these grapes. Yeah, I know. They are just a few short days, I'd say maybe a week, away from getting ready to pick. And so I've never really seen a, a grape get that almost like black on it. Welch has got nothing on that. Look at that, that's crazy. <laughs> from a Pinot Noir point of view, that's a beautiful cluster. You, you don't want them to be, the clusters to be too big, mm -hmm. uh, because then the ratio of skin to juice gets thrown off. You want to have a good ratio so that the skins, which have a lot of the color of the wine, mm -hmm. are not being too diluted from a lot of juice. But but that's a really, a pretty Pinot Noir cluster. What is the taste like? I know I'm about the taste of it. Well, you, you gotta try it. Uh -huh. Look yeah. at that. It's a little dew drop. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. Well, in Rome, you know, don't be shy. Mm -hmm. okay. Tastes like a beautiful fresh grape. And this is all organic, right? No, all... Organic, biodynamic. Mm -hmm. One thing that we look at really closely are the seeds. Oh, wow. Because as the grapes ripen, those seeds turn brown. They go from green tissue to woody brown tissue. And, and when you see brown seeds, that's when you're ready to pick the grapes. So you guys come up, literally take one and see what the seeds are looking like? Absolutely. So this is, this is gonna be a while now, just mm, a little yeah. bit longer. Yeah, we wanna see more brown here, maybe a week away. The beauty of the weather that we're having right now is that we're getting cool nights. During the cool nights, the grapevines can retain the acidity in the grape. Think of wine like yin and yang, right? Two equal parts. You got it, acidity and sugar or sweetness. And you gotta have them in balance, like yin and yang, in order to make a really fine wine. And when we have weather like this, we're retaining acidity at the night, during the night, and we're developing sugars during the day when the sun's out. That is a real asset, mm -hmm. and it's why Pinot Noir does so well here in the North Willamette Valley. What other grapes are you, you growing out here? So we got Chardonnay, okay. uh, just up on the hill over here, and we've got Gamay Noir. Gamay? Yeah, which Gamay. is the Beaujolais grape. Okay. Yeah. I wanna learn more about that than Gamay. Well, yeah. That was a beautiful moment for me. I ain't never do nothing like that. Let's get going. So Rome, let's uh, have a look at some other grapes here. Huh? This is the end of the Pinot Noir block four. And this is the beginning of block three Chardonnay. Chardonnay grapes. Yeah, that's uh, some of my favorite wines uh, made out of these grapes. These are definitely wine grapes. They're, they're specifically cultivated in order to produce wine. And they make some of the greatest wines in the world. Look at that. Same layout, really tight bundles, different colors. So right now, according to what we have been sampling, this one has more sugar, is a little riper, mm -hmm. further along than the Chardonnay. The Chardonnay is gonna need a little bit more time, maybe 10 days or two weeks okay. before we're ready to, to pick it. You may notice that you can see all of the fruit on this side of the canopy, whereas over here, you see that we're, we're leaving the leaves. This is, this is the west side where we're protecting the fruit from the hot afternoon sun. Mm -hmm. This is the east side where we want to expose the fruit to the cooler morning sun. When we remove the leaves like we've done here, there's better air circulation and that reduces the, the danger of disease, the fungal mildew pressure that could damage the fruit. These are looking juicy and tight. Yeah. Tastes like a tart green grape. Honestly, I think the flavor is gonna develop once you start doing that fermentation process, but it tastes pretty similar to the, to the darker uh, Pinot Noir grape. 
And it's the same situation with these seeds, right? Yeah. So you want to see brown seeds. We need more time with these grapes. Mm -hmm. So they're probably going to be green. That is a beautiful a way of different. observing nature. Yeah. I did not know that. That is like so cool. Yeah. Well, I think we ought to head up to the Gamay Noir grapes. Now, the Gamay Noir is a red grape, makes a red wine. It's the Beaujolais grape. So if you've ever had a Beaujolais from France, mm -hmm. you've had a Gamay Noir wine. Gamay. I was saying Gamay. No. My girlfriend was like, don't say that. <laughs> I do have one question before we get into these grapes. Yeah. Biodynamic, what oh. is that? That's a certification yeah. that you guys, what does that entail? In organic viticulture, it's largely defined by what we don't use. We don't use a lot of toxic or any toxic chemicals. Biodynamic requires you to be organic, but and then go, a little further. go further. And mm -hmm. and what that further part is, using various sort of uh, native things that are growing in the vineyard as preparations that you process and then you put back into the soil. And that's a beautiful thing I keep it up. Is go go the extra mile, you know? That's yeah. what y'all do. Well, that's what we try to do. Yeah. This is Gamay Noir. Let's try some of this. Mm -hmm. Now, just from looking at it, it looks a little bit looser. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's much looser. It's a little later ripening than Pinot Noir, mm -hmm. so it's going to still be tartar yet. Mm -hmm. But you ought to try some. That's right. I'll do a little, a little bite like that for Yeah. Me. Harder and a lot more fruitier. Gamay makes a really kind of fruit-driven wine, mm -hmm. whereas Pinot Noir can make a wine that is uh, sort of spicy, mm -hmm. spicy-driven as well as fruit. Gamay is more fruit, fruit strawberry. Uh, I definitely get that just yeah. from tasting that. Doug, thank you so much. Rome, it is a real mm -hmm. pleasure having you on the vineyard, man. Mm -hmm. This was a beautiful experience. You're one of my favorite people now, honestly. Well, so thank this you. Guy, yeah. <laughs> this is it, this is the man. We're gonna see some testing for sugars next week. Yeah, right? that's right. I love this guy. <laughs> <laughs>
the solid sugar bits in the wine. So we're gonna take a look at that and put it up to the light. And you can tell me where that blue line is in terms of a number. Where the blue line like starts? Yeah. 21. Okay, so that's gonna translate as of right now in the range of 11 to 12% alcohol, which is perfect for rosé. So we're likely gonna pick these grapes tomorrow um, and process them soon. What do we do with this? Taste it. Drink it. It's grape juice, that's good. That's right? fine. Are you ready for some actual wine? I'm ready for some actual wine. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. Cheers, guys. Cheers. <laughs> oh, oh, wow, good. that's good. That's fire. Uh -huh. Now that you've sampled some grapes down there and ha had a look at the lab results, I wanted you to taste some final wine that we had actually finished last year. This is Pinot Noir. Straight from that row we just went from, right? From, yeah, block four, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah cheers, Pinot. man. Or etiquette, though. I'll, let's run through that. Sure, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's young wine, so you want to maybe swirl a little bit mm -hmm. to give it some oxygen, mm -hmm. right? It, it, wine needs air to kind of open up. Otherwise, it stays closed and you can't get as much of the aroma and the flavor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a little smell. Yeah. You can kind of smell the oak in a way, a little bit of a... It's like a, like a smokiness kind of. A little smoky little. and a little caramel, even. Mm -hmm. Yeah, vanilla. Yeah. Very caramel, dark, deep flavor set. That's really nice. Ooh. Nice little chill on it too, just from being just in this yeah. uh, some climate. I really like Pinot Noir that's light. Mm -hmm. Kind of has this verve and life. Cheers. Cheers, man. Beautiful thing right here. You saw we just got a little taste from the barrel. Now we're gonna get a taste from the bottle. I'm gonna make my selection of what I'm gonna pick and actually cook with. This is Chardonnay from the 2020 Vintage. It was grown from these vines right behind you. Mm -hmm. Cheers, thanks for Cheers. coming to visit. I appreciate it, this is beautiful. Thanks for having me, beautiful. Okay. That's very nice, tart, ooh. So the importance of that acidity that you heard from Doug and me in processing those samples, that's what gives you that salivating effect mm -hmm. with Chardonnay, and that's something we really like to have in our Chardonnays. Yeah, you like what you like, you know? Break those barriers, break those walls. This is delicious, I like this. This is our 2021 Select Pinot Noir. When you infuse air with swirling, it volatilizes the aroma compounds. That's and a helps, beautiful color too. Look at the way that sun hand it. Helps it, helps the good smells come out. Mm -hmm. This is meant to be an approachable wine um, in its youth uh, and versatile. You can pair it with it, you can cook with it. All right, so decisions, decisions. What am I gonna- Tough gonna choices. Mm -hmm. Cause they both good, I think. I think I'm gonna choose this one, but I'm also just gonna take this home with me. Okay. <laughs> Both is always yeah. better. Cheers to that. <laughs> Cheers. Ooh. Let's Let's get cooking. Let's get cooking. You, you heard her. Let's get cooking. <laughs> We're about to go back to my rip shack. We got the bottles in hand. Look at that, boom, boom. One for drinking, but both for drinking, but more so for cooking, all right? <laughs> Um, I don't know what I'm gonna make. I'm thinking I've been pondering this whole time. So you're gonna have to stay tuned and call me back to the rip check to see what I make, all right? This was a beautiful experience. This is best episode yet. Best episode yet, you know? Oh, you okay. can't even high five me. Oh, that's I sad. Can't. You could bless the bottle though. Blessing. No, the no, no, fist. There you go. Do it again. <laughs> okay. There you go. <laughs> now, I'm gonna walk home. I'm gonna get out of here. I got the bottles. All right. Oh, Bye. We're back at home, my crib, AKA the Rip Shack. We just got back from the vineyard. And last time I was there, we were trying all these different wines, right? We had that Chardonnay, had a little rose off camera and some Pinot Noir. That's what I ended up picking, the Pinot Noir. This beautiful bottle right here. And after some, uh, some debating, some thinking, I was really trying to think what would be the best dish to showcase this wine. You know, I was, just, I was going through the archive, my books over there and uh, I decided to do a Coco Vin. Coco Vin. If you're not familiar with Coco Vin, it is a traditional French countryside stew consisting of chicken, some bacon, lordons, mushrooms, and some herbs, thyme, butter, flour, onion, and garlic, and a ton of wine. Excuse my language, like about half a bottle of wine. Coco Vin, that's what we're sticking with. Coke stands for cock or rooster. 
not this recipe exactly, but Coco Bon in general was uh, popularized by Julia Childs with her book, Mastery of French Cookery. I think that's what it's called. Say in the comments if it's not that. No! So yeah, this is my version of it. I think this is the best way to show the pureness of this wine. It's delicious. The crib is gonna be smelling good. I'm ready to start cooking. Cause it takes a while, all right? It's patience. This is the perfect dish for patience and execution, all right? But it's very simple. This, this is all we're using right here. That's it. In a, a pot, one pot. Before we get into the, the chicken and the, the cock and all that, we're gonna cut some things. We're gonna cut some onions and veggies. Boom, 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 easy. All right, so I chopped up that whole onion, and now we're gonna get to these mushrooms. With these, I just like to take the stem off like that. And then we're gonna quarter these. Simple as that. These big one like that, I'll just go boom, boom. And this is called mise en place, all right? It's better for this since it's all gonna just take, you're just gonna be waiting in front of the pot, doing everything. It's better to just have like everything ready. Garlic, four large cloves of that. You got it there, you got your knife. Do a light smash, you peel it. Look, easy. I got my nails did, so it's kind of hard to peel. Yes, take care of yourself. The feet and all that. And then we're just gonna mince this up. Boom, and this is gonna be added in a later stage of the dish. And I'll tell you why, I'll save it. Next is carrots. I have a philosophy with carrots. Wash them, clean them, but keep the skin on. I like to do that, especially in this context, but there's a lot of good vitamins and nutrients in that. So why peel it, why do that? Don't play yourself. And we're gonna cut these into long pieces like this. Since this is getting braised, we want them to be some nice sizes, you know, hold up. And I like to cut, Roll, cut, let's get some nice funky shapes. Call this on a bias too. We're having people over tonight to eat this stuff up. So we got the carrots, the mushrooms, and these three things right here are all gonna go in the pot at the same time. The garlic, I'm just moving this to the side. It's gonna go in a little bit later. So now we have time. And this is gonna just make this dish pop, all right? Give it a nice flavor. Little, little, you know, little herbaceous woodiness, all those words, right? So to pick time, the leaves are gonna be pointing up like that, right? What you're gonna wanna do is go the opposite way, pinch, and just drag it all out like that. Once we pick them all like that, we're just gonna roughly chop it really quick too. And this is gonna go in l later in the dish when it's actually braising. All this is happening in one pot. You're just gonna be standing there watching and observing and just taking your time doing this, right? So that's why we pre-gamed all of this. Now we're gonna move on to the chicken, rendering out some bacon, and you'll see, you'll see what that goes like, all right? So the rib shack, the term comes from, it's an East Coast thing, right? You're living in, you're living in the hood, you're doing your thing. Uh, my brother's just slang, rib shack, the brib. If you, some of y'all know what that means. Rib shack, crib shack. It's just a New York slang for calling your home. But that's where that comes from. And this is my rib shack. You can have a rib shack too. We're gonna preheat this pan. This beautiful Dutch oven, this is clean. Beautiful Dutch oven. A little bit of olive oil, good olive oil. You want good wine, good chicken, good olive oil. Cause this dish is so simple. So you want the best thing, all right? So while this is preheating, I'm gonna show you what I got here. I got some pancetta chopped up. You can use just regular bacon. I prefer like a slab bacon, thicker bacon. We're gonna slowly render that out. So we're gonna get that boom. And we got beautiful chicken thigh here that we're gonna season with a little bit of salt. And with this dish, I like to watch my salt level because we got bacon in there. We're gonna season throughout somewhat, but this is gonna reduce, reduce a little bit. So we're gonna season just the top side, the skin. Then we're gonna hit it with some fresh cracked black pepper. And I patted this dry. So we're gonna start rendering this out. Rendering, the process of rendering is slowly cooking fatty pieces of meat to slowly get it crispy and to get all that fat out. We're gonna do that for this bacon, and then we're gonna do that for the chicken skin too. And we're gonna do this for like six minutes. And so you'll start to see the difference. It'll be brown, it'll be nice, crispy, and we'll take that out. So we rendered that bacon fat. We got a lot of fat in there. We're gonna keep that in here. And we're doing this nice and slow, not too hot. This pan has residual heat, it's a heavy bottom Dutch oven. So now we're gonna add the chicken to it. We're gonna do it in batches. This chicken is cold, so as you put it in there, the temperature is gonna, is gonna drop. 
So we're gonna add that there. If you don't hear it, that's fine. We're pretty much just gonna let that crisp up and do its thing. Then we're gonna flip it. We're probably gonna do three to four minutes on the skin side. Once it gets brown, flip it for like two minutes on the flesh side and then take it off. We're gonna sit it right back on the tray. All the juices that comes from it, we're gonna keep that and we're gonna throw it right back in once we start braising stuff. All right, so this is our second batch of chicken. I'm gonna take it out. Got a nice little sear on it. We're gonna let that rest for a bit. And look, we have all that fat. We definitely don't need to cook with all that. So I'm gonna drain some of this and then throw some of the veggies in there and let those start cooking. There's about like two tablespoons of fat left in there. I'm gonna go in with all of this besides the garlic. We'll make a flat, even layer. And like I said, again, we're watching the salt. You can always salt to taste after, but I'm gonna hit it with a little bit. So what's gonna happen here is when you sweat out onions or anything like that, you put some salt in it, some liquid is gonna come out of it. And then we're gonna start to scrape the pan and get this thing called fawn, which is from the bacon, from the chicken fat. All that goodness is gonna get around and all up in the veggies. And that's what we're doing, that's the science. Okay. And I'm not adding in the garlic just yet. We don't want it to burn or anything. It just needs to cook really quick, maybe like a minute, just to get just to get all the flavor and all that good stuff going. Doesn't need too much cooking time. Throw the garlic in there, little pieces, it goes in there, it burns, it gets weird. It's weird, weird. It's, we stay away from that. But we're gonna let this go for like five, six minutes, maybe seven. We're looking for the onions to get nice and dark. I was gonna release some of these juices, but look, look at that, you can see it already. It's like, getting juicy. Can you make that sound effect again, girl? Yeah, that's a cooking term. Sometimes people be talking too much. It's like less words, just more, you know, just more sounds. But that's what we're looking for. As you can see, the onions is nice and juicy. Look at that. All that bits, I got that skin up. All the bits is, is incorporating that. Smell that, Chelsea, what does this smell like? Smells heavenly. It smells heavily. It smells like depth. So we're gonna add that garlic now, and we're just gonna let that cook out for like a minute. And then what we're gonna do, while this is cooking, I'll explain that to you. We'll get that all around in the juices. Is we're gonna add a little bit of pork. This right here is sweet. It's mm, ah. This is like a dessert wine. We put this on top of ice cream and do weird stuff like that. But we're just gonna add a bit of this. But the main star. It's gonna be that brick house, that brick. We're gonna add like half this bottle and then the rest will disappear. I'll drink it. But half that bottle, then we'll add the chicken back and everything. But look at this, the garlic right here. No need to cook too crazy. This is not this is not the most conventional Coco Vaughn again. So but say in the comments, you like it, you hate it, this is going on. We're gonna add a little bit of pork, but remember just a little bit complexity, a little sweetness, a little. All right, the real star is gonna be that wine, all right? That beautiful, beautiful Pinot Noir. We're gonna add a little splash of that. That's for all the homies out there. That's, that's not with us today. But smell that, you can already smell it. It smells crazy. It smells like French cooking. And now what we're gonna do is, I probably should have did this before, but we're gonna open it on camera. This beautiful, beautiful red wine. Shout out to Brick House again. That's just going, it's reducing, it's doing this thing, it smells good. Just gonna open the, pop the top. I'm nervous, wow. The port reduced quite a bit. Turned that up higher, we're gonna add the bacon. We're gonna nuzzle the chicken in there. Then we're gonna add the wine. About half a bottle of wine. You all right? I'm, I'm, I'm sweating, I got nervous, but we, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we're gonna put that in there. All right, so we got that chicken in there with that pork reduced, that bacon. Now we're gonna add some chicken stock and this wine. The beauty of this is we got enough chicken stock now. It's about a cup. It's not filling up the whole thing. You want everything to just be above the chicken, right on top of it. So adding this half bottle is gonna gonna do that for us. It's gonna be perfect. The chicken. I'm just making sure it's nice and nestled, and we're gonna bring this up to a simmer. Get it going, rolling. And I'm gonna add the top to it. It's a very heavy top. The oven is preheated this whole time. I forgot to mention this whole time this oven was preheated to 300 degrees. We're gonna throw it in there. 
for about 40 to 50 minutes just to cook the chicken through. The sauce is gonna reduce a little bit. And then we're gonna do a roux, but we're gonna do a little unconventional roux, a little quick one, all right? But we're gonna bring this up to a boil. One thing, this is real life, it's a show, but it's also real life. I forgot to add the time, but this is the time you add the time. This really makes the dish. I wouldn't go with rosemary, I wouldn't go with anything else but time. I'm just gonna give it a little shoop -oop. Get it nice in there, we'll simmer. Turn it off, and we're gonna throw it in this oven, 300. Keep it, I don't keep it 100, keep it 300. We're gonna throw that in there, and we're gonna let that cook for about an hour, 50 minutes to an hour. All right, so it's been in there reducing, cooking for about 50 minutes, all right? And it's smelling good. It's smelling like a church in here. So I'm gonna pull this out. Oh, I'll show y'all the results. Ooh, that's hot. I'm gonna turn this on low so we're gonna keep that heat. But look at that. Beautiful. This bubbling is going away. What we're gonna do is take this chicken out. But look at this chicken. It's all colored out. It's like a nice little, little hue of that wine. Can you see that? And now we're gonna do the root. It's a little unconventional. Whatever, people have done this before. Tablespoon flour, tablespoon butter. We're gonna mix this together. We're gonna make a paste. We're not making a pot of like a tablespoon of that. Butter flour. And we're gonna mix this and just get it all pasty, right? Flour is completely into that. It's a little cheat code right there. And we're just gonna mix that up. Mix it, mix it, go, go, go. And this is gonna be that thickener. This is what's gonna get it really thick. And then once it's thick, I'm gonna taste it for salt. I'm probably definitely gonna add some more black pepper to this. Now we're gonna sneak that chicken right back in there. Beautiful, look at that. And the chicken is absolutely shreddy. You'll see, we'll plate it up. I'm gonna bring this pot over here. We're gonna scoop it, sauce it. I'm gonna chop some parsley really quick. You can put the camera down. Just so I can go poop, poop, so. <laughs> All right, look at that beautiful, juicy, delicious cocoa vong. Look at the hue of this chicken right here. Look at that. That's from that red wine, half a bottle, brick house, all day. Pinot Noir. I guess you can smell the wine. You can smell a little hint, a little hint of that uh, port in there. You're gonna have the carrots. Look at that bacon, onion. Ooh, ah, just moving it all around. I'm gonna taste this though, all right? First thing, I'm gonna taste this sauce. Let me get a spoon. Beautiful, I'm just gonna pour a little over the chicken, bless it, and then take a little taste. That's good, that's real good. Sweet, still taste that wine, savory, the bacon, the depth of every single thing we did, right? We rented out the bacon, we rented out the skin of the chicken thigh, did the font, we put the vegetables in there. It's just a beautiful thing. I just wanna eat it, honestly. Thank you, my lady. Got some of you can't, you know what I'm saying? Look. This is probably gonna be heartburn central for me, but I got Tums, it's okay. We're gonna pour up. Enjoy yourself. Got one life to live, look at that right there. Some of that Jesus juice. We'll take a sip of that. Shout out to Brick House. King! For taking us all around the vineyard. Doug, Savannah, all the homies that help out to pick those grapes, that's hard work. All right, hard work for this. A beautiful wine. And you'll be able to do beautiful things like this. Cheers. Look at a little bit of the chicken, a little bit of carrot. Dip it in the juice again. Look at the dip. Look at the drip. Look at the dip. Look at that. That's going in my mouth. Mm-hmm. That is so good. It's hitting a part of me that hasn't been hit in a long time. It sounds crazy, but <laughs> it's just so good. The sweetness of that carrot too, I know people will be like, oh, you put the carrot in. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. My name is Rome. This is Coco Vaughn, made with beautiful brick house wine. You can find this recipe and many more, many, many more at delish.com. Also, like and subscribe to this video, right? We got to pay rent, lights, cameras, action, all right? I love you guys. Let's cheers. Cheers to yourself, all right? A toast for the douchebags. No. The, the good people <laughs> all around the world. <laughs> In the comments below, 
Let us know where we should travel to next. What should we do, all right? This is Farm the Table. 